Um, so Thanks how for me. did you get involved with Jojo Rabbit? Um, I mean, for, for me, it happened really fast. I think faster than it usually happens. I was doing reshoots for The Hate You Give in Atlanta, and I received a script, read it overnight, the, did a Skype, with quick Taika. Skype with Taika. Mm -hmm. And after I finished the reshoots, I came back home to LA for four days and then flew to Prague. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so at what point did uh, what point did he tell you that there's um, an imaginary Hitler? In the oh, no, I, I knew <laughs> <laughs> I, I knew from the beginning, and it's like I mean I I loved everything uh, about Taika, and mm -hmm. like I knew his other movies, so I kind of knew what I'm getting myself into. Mm -hmm. um, the whole. Uh, vibe of the movie is very different from your average World War II picture. Um, you know, those are usually very drab and dreary, and this is very vibrant and bright and full of color. So uh, what did you and Taika discuss about developing that aesthetic? Uh, I think it was it was something that um, it's funny that came it came from all the departments and it was it was great because we spoke about it. And I remember the first time, which was, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, the first time I saw uh, color footage from World War II, I was shocked. I was like, oh, because you usually, like we get so used to, to black and white mm -hmm. documentaries. And, and um, I remember seeing that and thinking like, yeah, maybe it would be interesting to do a, a, a World War II movie and, and just like take advantage of the color saturation. And um, during prep, um, just seeing the the sketches from the art department and uh, um, costume samples and it's like kind of restarting the research a little bit with Taika we realize we can actually use uh, saturation to our advantage. Mm -hmm. um, how uh, deeply uh, into research do you do into like World War Two and like what like those villages actually looked like at the time and not just you know what we usually see in films of like washed out like grays and greens. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, we are lucky because we, we shot in these two small um, towns, um, like an hour and a half driving from Prague, and just watching, um, just like looking at, at materials like steels and, and all that from the 40s, um, they were so similar, and for some reason they were really careful, like we have the same, kind of the same architecture in Romania where... Um, but I, I don't know what happened in Czech Republic. They were really careful with air conditionings and, and antennas and all that. So it was very easy by just removing cars and street signs to, to be able to shoot 360 pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I remember specifically that the town square, like it looked so similar. Like mm -hmm. everything was kind of freezed in time. Mm -hmm. Um, what kind of equipment did you use or like specific lenses to really bring out like those reds and the um, color and the I mean, we, it was interesting because there was something that I always uh, kind of wanted to do but I never got the chance because uh, I never thought it was right for any of the other projects um, and I really wanted to do a 185 anamorphic with 1.3 um, lenses and uh, we, we did extensive tested testing we we wanted at one point to to shoot 133 so we tried everything 133 166 185 240 two times anamorphic and when we realized that um it 185 would work best for our story um i immediately went back um, and thought about using this um, hawk v lights they're 1.3s so starting with a squarish sensor, you'll get something very close to 185. So with minimal cropping, you get a 185 anamorphic, which is kind of really interesting. Mm. And that what that does, it, it you, you get everything. Because if you do a two times anamorphic and crop it to 185, then you lose the most interesting part of an anamorphic lens, I think. Mm -hmm. But with, uh, with those, we kind of took advantage of, of everything and from skin tones to flares to everything else. Mm -hmm. And plus, not again, like not shying away from from color saturation. I think mm -hmm. that was the perfect combo. Um, I think like as the film goes on, like you kind of lose a little bit of the color, especially you know towards the end with like the huge battle sequence and everything. Like when the, his the, there was something because we we thought about um, showing the passage of time, and we that's why we really all of us enjoyed having so much saturation at the at the beginning of the movie because we knew we'll want to 
shift drastically towards a, a colder color palette in the end. Mm -hmm. So how did you go about achieving that? It, it was a lot, I mean, a lot with, with the help of my, my DIT and uh, just trying to do as much on set as possible. We didn't switch lenses. We didn't, we kind of kept the same, same thing and um, a lot of help on set with my DIT. Uh, did you feel like that was also just kind of like a metaphor for Jojo losing his innocence at that it, point? It was, given, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, I mean, the, the film is ostensibly about like such a serious subject matter, but it, the movie is a farce. <laughs> and so, how how do you like find that you know the like it's a fine tightrope to walk between like being too light and like being too dark? It's, so how how did you go about like finding that right balance? Uh, I think pretty much just following Taika. Like mm -hmm. he's <laughs> he's using so many comedic elements, but for for a bigger purpose and a bigger message. Mm -hmm. um, and we never really thought about it too much. It was a lot of improv on set every day. Mm -hmm. So what was that like uh, shooting with, like for improv? Uh, I mean, I, I, it felt that it would take way longer, but it actually didn't. It was just taking our time rehearsing and then blocking and then figuring out how to, to shoot everything. Mm -hmm. Um, I love some of the camera angles you use because it actually reminded me of Home Alone of just like from a child, like I love Home Alone, <laughs> so, um, just like of a child, like looking up and out towards the world because like everything from a child's perspective feels grander. So was that something you were going for? I think it was like one of the only rules we spoke about was like uh, every time after we rehearse, let's just like go lower and see kind of how the world looks from from Jojo's perspective. Mm -hmm. Um, can you talk about shooting in some of like the cramped quarters, like when, you know, where else is hidden and just like in the house in specifically, what was that like the setups? Uh, I mean, it was, it was interesting because we had, um, the space wasn't overbuilt, um, but it was pretty tight. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you could barely feel a person and the camera in there, but having that on stage, like uh, it allowed us to, to take some panels out and, and do all that. It was a long conversation about where the light would come from. And mm -hmm. we ended up building some vents at the bottom of the of the roof mm -hmm. uh, because we thought it would be important to, to feel for the audience to feel when it's daytime and when it's nighttime. Mm -hmm. And um, we did, because a lot of times I like to pair the anamorphics with some sphericals just in, in case. And a lot of times, uh, you would feel that a wide anamorphic would might distort too much uh, in an interior. Um, and Hawk Vantage has these uh, these T ones um, spherical lenses, which are pretty pretty amazing. And we we tried the two night scenes in the hiding place. We tried to use a petrol lamp and two candles as our key light, and oh, it kind cool. of worked. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, Taika plays Hitler, imaginary Hitler, uh, and he just kind of pops in and out of various scenes. So how did you guys go about setting those up and like shooting him? Like, did you, was that like part of the improv? Like you didn't know where he was going to come in from? No, I, I think it started, um, for, for just like, a, uh, at the beginning we, we kind of tried it a little bit and, and the more we, we did it, we realized it's, it's actually, it might help to shoot the scene with and without him. Oh, okay. um, quite a lot, and and that's that was more decided in editorial than than on set. Mm -hmm. oh, so you did both for yeah. for for a while, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then they just decided like what to use and what. Yeah, interesting. Um, so what are you working on now? Um, nothing in particular. Just I mean the <laughs> commercial world, <laughs> pretty much. I'm just waiting. No more imaginary Hitlers for now. So. <laughs> for now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mihai. Thank you so much for being with us today. We'll see you back up here. Thank in a you. Bit.